Eddie, you are well known as an espouser of perennial philosophy and theosophy. So please tell me what each one is and how they articulate. Robert, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. The perennial philosophy is an overarching term, an umbrella term. And it's best um, explained in the words of Albert Schweitzer, who described perennialism as the evergreen tree that always produces the same fruit, but never the same type of fruit, meaning that the eternal wisdom has got to be updated and formulated in the time and language of the culture in which it is grown, so to speak. And a theosophy, the definition is theosophia, not the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of God, but wisdom as possessed by the gods. Oh. Gods in the plural, meaning uh, those intelligences and powers in nature that have um, gone beyond the so-called ordinary human state. And the word theosophy really goes right back to the Alexandrian school of uh, Ammonia Sakas, and it was a term used by Jakob Bohm. And in both, in perennial philosophy mm -hmm. and theosophy, what is the role of consciousness? The role of consciousness is to point to the divine source and show how everything literally is an expression and an emanation of the one principle of the one central source so uh, there is fundamentally only one being in very capital letters of course a living being but being and becoming always go together <clears throat> the noun and the verb mm -hmm. being and becoming the being is the animating principle Becoming are the vehicles and bodies through which that animating principle must express. So those vehicles are also lives at their own level, just as the human body has billions of little lives that mm. work within the master principle. And so um, when we're talking about consciousness and the brain mm -hmm. and materialism, mm -hmm. it's a very different way of looking at consciousness. It is a very different way. One cannot understand consciousness as a product of something. And I say this with some vehemence. <laughs> the whole of uh, neuroscientific research, apart from many enlightened scientists, are regarding consciousness as a product, a generator of the brain. William James expressed the problem beautifully in his uh, Ingersoll lectures on human immortality, and certainly um, explained that very briefly. Schrodinger explained that, Max Planck explained that, and the tragedy in science, Robert, in my opinion, is that scientists are not listening to their greatest lights or their, their, their greatest beings. Hmm. Einstein, Schrodinger, Newton, Max Planck, Pauli, they are all pointing to an intelligence that has created, so to speak, the physical laws of science which govern the physical universe. And very, uh, as an aside, that was realized by none other than the great Florence Nightingale. There's one thing talking theory, it's one thing being at the coalface uh, mm -hmm. during the Crimean War, seeing blood and suffering, my goodness. So from experience, she said that the universe is regulated by scientific laws which are created by a higher intelligence. Mm. And that being the case, each person has a divine source, and each person will ultimately realize their divine source through what we call evolution. And what is that consciousness that relates to the divine source? What, what is it? That deepest source 
is what Schrodinger referred to, and it's as well to refer to a scientist, because they cut more ice, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> It is when Schrodinger was asking the question, what is consciousness, he was exploring this question of, I th can move my finger, but who is the I that moves this finger or thinks a thought? And he said that the only logical explanation is what he referred to as Atman equals Brahman, the personal self equals the all-comprehending eternal self. So there are other metaphors and similes like sparks of the divine. It is that central core which is deathless, mm. completely deathless. Spirit is the overused term, of course. Robert, I would say that the consciousness is the very ground of our being. All the great mystics, without exception, have used the analogy with light, and it's much more than an analogy. Now, the wonderful poet Shelley said, just as a dome of colored glass bends light, so our brains stain the white radiance of truth. So our brains are like colored glass that refracts the white radiance of truth, which is the universal consciousness. And we break it up into those various streams of consciousness. But just as a prism doesn't create and generate colors, so our brain does not generate consciousness. It breaks it up 